And hello, everyone. I'm Gwen Callahan, one of the co-directors of the HP Lovecraft Film Festival, and I'm joined by all four teams that participated in this year's Lovecraft Under the Gun 72-hour film project contest, film contest. Um, and we showed this at the festival on Sunday afternoon. Um, so I hope that a lot of you who maybe attended in person at the festival or what are able to watch it now and we were chatting with the filmmakers to kind of get a little more insight into their films because three days is really not very long to have to write um shoot score edit and put together an entire short film even if it's only a it's it's still um you know a lot of work to do in three days so um most of you guys i suspect stayed up for uh, many, many hours and were delirious by the end of this is what usually happens. Um, so we're gonna kind of chat with you about your process and, and um, the obstacles that you encountered and then um, just get a little, get a little bit into the actual uh, films that you've made. So. What do you need to do to make it stop? I don't worry. I'm gonna mute here for a second. <laughs> Okay. Make it okay. And um, so my first question is for let's see, let's, who was the first person in? Actually, it was Kier. So the last person in was I think Trash People. Now I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Let's start with Trash People <laughs> wearing the Santa hat. <laughs> and let's pick on you first. <laughs> And your film called was called Abomination. Um, so, oh, something I should mention is that every team had to use a prop and a line of dialogue, the same prop and the same line of dialogue somewhere in the film. And the prop was a sponge. Just, I don't know, we thought it was funny. <laughs> and uh, some kind of everyday objects that have to work into a cosmic horror short film. And then the line of dialogue was Abomination of Abominations which is taken from um, the story, The Thing on the Doorstep by H.P. Lovecraft. So um, Aunt Gore and Theo Mar, your film was called Abomination and featured uh, a very large kaiju-sized turtle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you had some animation and a song and everything. Um, I'm always curious, when teams do this, if you start with kind of an idea for a story or if you start with the prop and the line of dialogues, how did you guys approach this? Um, the turtle, I think, was the start because if we could make it work, we were going to try and use our friend's turtle yeah, <laughs> this year. Uh, We've been talking about doing it for years and just never got around to it. So Our friends, Allison and Drew Clark, were like, I want to I want to offer our turtle up for your film this year. <laughs> And I was like, well, if you can get me a lot of just random stock of your turtle doing whatever behind a green screen, I can see if I can use it in the film. Should have used a blue screen. <laughs> yeah, should have blue screen in hindsight. The the green screen only worked so, so well with a green turtle. But uh, I was like, just send it to me on Friday when the contest starts and I'll take a look at it after I get the line of dialogue and stuff and see if it's something I'm going to use. And and it was something I decided to use, uh, but uh, it was just a matter of like as soon as I got the line of dialogue and stuff because I didn't know what I was gonna do with the turtle yet, uh, but when we got the line of dialogue and that, and I'm like, what am I gonna do with the sponge? And then it's like, well, the sponge could be from outer space and it could turn people into giant turtles. You know, like they do. <laughs> and so I kind of just went from there. And then, uh, yeah, I just wrote this song around my three main objects, my actor <laughs> and uh, the prop and the line of dialogue. Okay. <laughs> um, and then you also write and compose your own music because yep. it's essentially a musical. Yeah, I usually uh, that's the thing I do the first the first night. As soon as I get yeah, the email with the dialogue and the prop, I immediately start writing a song because the song is the story so i'm like coming up with the story as i'm writing the song and uh i was i made it real easy on myself this year i'm like i'm just gonna make the line of dialogue the chorus <laughs> <laughs> and then 
and then everyone will remember I have it in there. <laughs> but uh, uh, it just worked really well. Abomination of Abominations is kind of metal, so I was like, that'll make a good chorus to the song. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with it this year. Um, how about you, Michael? Do you usually have kind of a, a story idea in mind and then go from there and work in the line of dialogue or um, like what kind of what's the sort of jump out for you? Uh, it depends. I mean, obviously, we're primarily uh, Jeff and I are writers, but I'm very visual artist to do a lot of the visual art design this time. Um, it had some kind of theme that I wanted to go for. Um, based on some philosophical arguments that I disagreed with. So um, there was that, and then the line of dialogue was just, I wanted to be really dark with this one rather than have anything uplifting at the end, even though I think you could interpret it as uplifting at the end, it's all detail. Um, but I think we uh, start with the artwork, kind of the, the setting that we're looking for. We have like the line of dialogue and everything um, and the prop kind of written down, like everybody keeps throwing it around to see where it fits and where it goes. Um, this kind of, you know, we kind of split the two main artists up so that they wouldn't, like the last one we did, there was some, there was a lot of confusion as to what would work and what the art style was going to be. And so I knew I wanted uh, Miranda's uh, wonderful uh, sort of almost like woodcut um silhouette work those were the trees that she did and just amazing i don't i don't think we got in the the final film you could really see these amazing trees well enough um and then the other artist ryan who's not here um that worked extensively on the main characters but um and then um surprisingly during the middle of the film race um we needed a, an animator um someone who was dedicated because of time and whatever and i knew that sarah my my partner was going to be doing some of the animation uh but Kara Souls jumped in for a couple hours, joined the team again, and that was awesome. She did a wonderful marathon of animation for us. So it was very cool to be reunited with her because as people don't know, um, Kara and I both were the first two entries into the Lovecraft and the Gun Festival, and she has worked with us for a lot of a lot of years, but hasn't for several years because she's she has a kid and a life. So we appreciate <laughs> we appreciate the gold that she can give us. Nice. Oh, that's wonderful. I actually ran into her um, this summer randomly in, in the in the street because I was like being a person on a weekend and got to got to chat with her for a minute. So awesome. I didn't realize that she had worked on, on your film with you. Yeah. Um, so Rick, how about you? What's your jumping off point usually for these films? Um, well, sometimes I'll have like a general idea of something that I would do if it works out and I usually I wait until they get the film requirements and then kind of get some inspiration from that if I can to make up a story um uh I I guess I had this so I just recently for this one here I recently had done the um the the 48 hour film race um, back at, uh, back in, uh, I think it was in August. And I wanted to do this, I was gonna try to do something with, um, something to do with the doll and that, and it didn't work out. So I, I just wanted to, I wanted to do some sort of film with the possessed doll so <laughs> I made it work for this one here <laughs> so I just uh after the got all the requirements I sort of made up a story that could go around it and got the people that could be involved and picked a location and once went out and kind of did it <laughs> sort of we <laughs> sort of I mean I didn't have the the full story um made out from the start we sort of i had a general idea and an outline in a sense and then we sort of just so partially made it up as we went along <laughs> so that's like how that's how that came about <laughs> nice. <I> like <laughs> stay flexible yeah um, 
<laughs> um, Kier, how about how about you? So you and Mark, uh, who we're not, who we don't see, you're, you're muted by the way. Yourself when you answer. Um, where where is your jumping off point for creating these films for the best? You may need to unmute her. Kier, hit your hit your little microphone. It's um. There. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. Last year, I made the mistake of having a Lovecraft story that I had come upon just shortly before the, the under the gun, before we were going to get the, the prop and the line of dialogue. And I read this unfinished story and I just fell in love with it. And that had to be the story. No one should ever do the under the gun. You quit picking the story before you have the line of dialogue. <laughs> yes. Anesthetical to each other. They were mutually exclusive. It, you know, whatever. So this year, you know, we promised ourselves we were going to make no decisions until we had our line of dialogue and our prop. But, you know, we were reading. We were reading the canon. We were, you know, finding all of these beautiful, all of these different stories. And we kind of ended up doing all of them. I, the, the challenge once we had the line of dialogue and the prop was uh, Mark sat down and in a in a just mind bendingly short amount of time decided you know what we're gonna we're gonna put as many of these pieces getting into one story as like humanly possible and mm -hmm. all of them I think nice awesome genius is not here he's at work keeping a roof over our heads. <laughs> Um, for, so you, it was like beyond Pikmin's dreams of the, so you, so uh, beyond Pikmin's dream of the witch house for sale. And, and basically the premise what if every freaky thing from every Lovecraft story that like has a house in it, what if they all happened in the same house and now some poor beleaguered a realtor has to sell this place where all this stuff has gone down. <laughs> um, what? How did you decide to use um, Barbies in your uh, film? <laughs> uh, well, so last year uh, there was there was a tiny there's like a second and a half doll in it. We normally do uh, shadow puppets, or at least I normally work with shadow puppets, which takes a lot of time. And a lot of energy, and again, doesn't lend itself particularly well to, you know, doing it in seventy-two hours or whatever. And so we kind of faked it and last year's film by having some dolls. And so this year we were like, what if we just had dolls? And when we were originally talking about it, this is very much um, Mark's project. But when we were first talking about it, I thought he meant dolls as shadow puppets. As at some point, it's like, wait, what do you mean they're going to see the dog? Like, are, are we even allowed to do that? Like, is, is that copyright infringement or, you know, whatever? And we decided we didn't care and, <laughs> and went forward with it. But it was, uh, it was, I don't know, a combination of things, but mostly I didn't want to cut out 12,000 shapes for, for the shadow puppets. <laughs> God. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you what was your biggest challenge with making a film and making this particular film aside from the time limit? <laughs> I can come back to you. Yeah, if you, I, need, if you need to think about. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Funny ones was that it turned out. Barbie houses are not the right scale for Barbie doll. How is that possible? <laughs> um, we ran in a lot of issues with trying to film where the dolls weren't hitting their heads on, where it looked like they ought to belong in this environment. That that was one of the surprising pieces. That's weird. I never thought about how yeah the dream house is like not really big enough. Barbie to actually like be in that space. <laughs> really, it's really not. 
Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, for I'm gonna move over to trash people from the dump video or Aunt Gore and Theo. Um with your film, um, because you know, you do all the dialogue through the song and you already have written music, so you don't need a soundtrack. Um, but then you've also added in some live action elements with uh, a flat background. Mm-hmm. Um, but what are the what are the challenges of putting all of that together for you guys? Um, well, I mean, like uh, there, there's always the obvious where it's a green screen, so I have to be careful <laughs> what kind of color palette I use. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, the green screen is tricky. Sometimes it works pretty good, and sometimes it doesn't. I don't use like the best programs to do this, <laughs> and I just use my cell phone to record everything. So I kind of know just enough to do what I need to do but um uh yeah green screen stuff can be a challenge I uh last year with our short I think that was the first time we incorporated like quite a bit of live action into the main story and so I wanted to do more of that this year and I just kind of like the goofy like Saturday morning cartoon show aesthetic of like live actors in front of a cartoon background yeah so like uh, that was kind of what I was going for for that like kind of that Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic, yeah. Nice. Well, well, it came. It comes across for sure. Nice. <laughs> um, for Amelis with the last mass year, um, the bird design, um with the two so you've got a magpie and a lyre bird i had to look up what a lyre bird is because i'd never heard of one and it turns out they're indigenous to australia um how did you settle on using those two particular birds so it really had nothing to do with where they were from but what we wanted to have (laughs) was uh, a magpie originally because it's a very intelligent bird and then a lyre bird that could reproduce almost any sound that it heard and the idea was that these were the last living creatures perhaps in the universe and that they were kind of the record of the of our Earth's intellect and then kind of a recorded history of the sounds in a very primitive way. But that's how we hit on those two birds. Okay. And we want it to be kind of like a, a weird dark fairy tale. Yeah, definitely. Charles has animals. <laughs> animals. Um, so for the the design of the the birds and like recreating those on paper, because like uh I think when I first, the first time I saw the film, I was like, oh, there's like a a phoenix or a dragon. Like, what is this bird? I'm like, a liar bird. Okay. And I looked up pictures and I'm like, oh my God, they actually have those crazy tail feathers. And it looks pretty much how your designs are. Um, and was that a consideration as well? Like the the visual contrast between just like a very standard bird? And we had to look it up. Bird. Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely looked it up. We knew um and ryan who's the artist that that did 99 percent of the paper crafting on um, the birds um wanted to do i mean we shared a vision that we you wanted to look like these birds as close as possible we looked at those tail feathers and we're like oh my god that's going to be a nightmare to animate but he did it so he did all the cutting of that and that was a lot of work oh wow very cool yeah uh- so miranda was busy busy cutting out those really intricate shadow things for the backgrounds and then ryan was focused on the birds okay. and i was i was writing music because we were down an animator and um normally the person that does music for us was not available well he did throw us some music toward the end but i did most of the music for the first half of the film okay wearing many wearing many hats is a theme yes. in independent film in general but i think even more so in these um timed film races um because you have to I guess communicating what you needs with like a large group of people takes time too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I guess it's just faster to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so a question yeah. for De- Jeffrey and uh, Miranda, um, what were your main roles in the film and what was your favorite part about working on the film? Well, I was, um, I, w- I was pulled in by Michael to do backgrounds. I have helped out on uh, earlier Amla stuff, uh, but hadn't done what, you know, what, what I, uh, what I do 
which is shadow puppets and paper cutting. Uh, because when I do this for my, my own enjoyment, it's kind of a nice meditative practice. It's not for a film race. <laughs> I made sure, you know, give me clear guidelines, uh, give me a clear role. And uh, I, was, I was assigned background. So we're going to do some strange things. Like we're going to have uh, telephone poles that are growing into trees or vice versa. We're going to have this surreal, you know, tiered landscape. We're going to have a weird acorn. So, okay. All right. I, I know what I'm doing. I have X amount of hours. I'm going to do just that. And, you know, checking in with Ryan to make sure like things were like, you know, in the right scale and level of detail, but it really helped to have a clear, role that this is what you're doing um what i what did i like about it uh i'm just curious about the animation process like i love uh the old cut paper animation by lottie Renninger. i love stop motion so just to see this being done and learn little bits here and there and have you know two or three toes in the water is satisfying Nice. And Jeffrey, how about you? Same questions. Um, well, Michael and I had spoken uh, a little bit before and we decided that we really wanted to have something to do with the crow. And, uh, and a friend of mine in England had told me this myth about magpies. And I always have to see them twos. And so we kind of launched off from there and then my and then michael came up with the lyra bed lyra bed and um mm -hmm. so then we're just constantly bouncing back and forth you know ideas from that and um getting angry as the evening goes on That's <laughs> this was a very painful race for us yeah <laughs> but you know, i think i think it turns out I, yeah <laughs> well, and I'm not, unfortunately, <clears throat> I'm I, I'm not talented enough to do this stuff with with the paper and the animating and stuff like that. So I can only do the, I can only help with the writing. Yeah, for this time, we chose not, we, because I thought we had some really strong art talent with 2D and we hadn't done 2D for the Lovecraft ever. We've never done paper for Lovecraft ever. So I thought it'd be interesting to do. And it kind of melded several styles that we've done in the past with both the shadow um, casting. We use it kind of like a, a, a lens to focus things and make them blurry or sharp focus. And then 2D paper animation on top of that, which we had never done before. So Jeffrey and I, which would be doing like three-dimensional art like building sets and things like that we were less useful it's yeah. hard. hard to just be like i don't know how to do that so somebody else is like relying on somebody else to do it no i think everybody I was fully cognizant that i didn't know how to do it <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm i'm pretty sure they're like can you do that i'm like yeah no you know i can't do that <laughs> so, that's so just somebody else <laughs> Jeffrey keeps me sane by like where the the artists are working on the art. I'm kind of giving them directions, and telling them and answering questions, and then Jeffrey and I will just banter back the story ideas back and forth, and then we'll refine it, and then be right and be right and be right and be right, and then make it shove it off, and and shove sillier it off to the voice actor, go shove it off to the voice director, who I've still not met in person, who who's amazing. I really like working with him. Right. <laughs> Let's make it sillier and sillier until <laughs> day late at night. Yes. <laughs> oh wow, um, Rick. How about you? What was uh, what was your um, favorite part about making the film? My favorite part. Um, oh, probably when I was out. We were out there. Everybody's out there filming. It was pretty, we had a pretty fun time, just the filming part of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just creating the story. Um, so that was probably the funnest part. Uh, then getting back and looking through all the footage and editing it together was uh, 
in the short period of time and lack of sleep was probably the <laughs> most challenging. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah, I'm trying to keep everything simple, but uh, as could be, because I you know didn't have a big crew really. Basically, it was just me and then the actors for the most part. I had a makeup lady that did some um made one of the guys look like a, a kind of a turn into a monster type of a character <laughs> that, that helped out with the look of the film but so yeah i just uh just the actual out there filming was yeah you know, definitely the funnest part of it <laughs> and is your um do you have a collaborative vibe going on or do you pretty much just write the story and the actors um i it's it really depends sometimes um i mean I'll, if they have an idea that comes to them you know i'm people sometimes get some ideas i'll and it sounds good i'll i'll go along with it too yeah i mean it's um if if it's something at the start something just comes to me and i can write something out um, then we'll kind of go by that for the most part, but a lot of times in these film races, I maybe partially get that done, but part of it just is um, kind of make up as we go or do some improvising. So, you know, I, some of the actors have some ideas or can come up with things on their own, it, that helps out. So, nice. yeah. <laughs> so in, in the scenes with the, um, the, sam the samurai sword, how um like how choreographed or planned out was were those scenes where you kind of like okay you need to do was it kind of a sketch and you had the performer fill in the necessary beats or like was it kind of planned out um you mean the things that he did with the sword you yeah no i i just i just said you'll be this samurai character with a sword and i gave him the sword and he just kind of I uh, made up his little moves that he did on his own <laughs> and I said I'll just gonna film do whatever you can do and <laughs> see what it looks like <laughs> okay well, it, was, uh, it was pretty good <laughs> yeah he's a, he, he's, a, he, he's a musician too so and stuff so he's I, you know I guess he has and he's also um he knows some karate or some form of martial arts he's been taking classes with that too so I kind of helped out <laughs> um and then your so your use of this the prop was one of the ones that made me laugh a lot because um you know she just like kind of pulls it out of her shirt well, yeah. so <laughs> I wasn't really yeah that's that's the thing there's a sponge I wasn't I wasn't really we didn't really have a clear idea on what to use with that I'm like okay how are we going to fit this in and then figuring it when she was stabbing the doll at the end there, you know, okay, she could now she after she's done, she could wipe the the blade off with the sponge, but it's like you know, it's like and she like she just figured okay, she's just the one that came up with the idea. So maybe I have it kind of tucked in here for for whatever reason, who knows? But I go, it sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so was did was it like in her shirt like the whole time she was or was no scene. no no we just she just put it in there right before she pulled it out yeah. <laughs> so yeah um uh, yeah so yeah that i was trying to think of how of a good way to use it and it seemed appropriate that she would at, at the end after stabbing the doll she would use it to wipe the blood off it's just okay where's the just pop out of nowhere or why that's how we so, <laughs> he figured okay yeah why not have a sponge a sponge tucked under your shirt <laughs> so that's how we came about with that <laughs> um where did you find the doll that is peg oh uh the um value village okay <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and did, did it take you long? Like, did you have kind of an idea of what you wanted the doll to look like? Or did you just kind of go and be like, that one looks okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I, I went to see what they had. And I go, this looks like a good one. And it was like $5. <laughs> this will work. <laughs> then I had, um, well, I just had the normal, the normal look to begin with. And when she was looking kind of creepy and possessed more, I, the makeup artist was there. Did some kind of weird evil makeup on job on her <laughs> to help out with that part of it. Nice. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> yeah, um, so that was pretty fun. Very cool. <laughs> so um my question for all all of you um is do you make films outside of the film race and um where will where can we learn about those if yes and if if no do you plan to make any films so Kira, i'm going to start with you um do do you have other films that you've made outside the film race we do and not we we don't currently last year was um our first film is a collaborative mark has made independent films on on his own uh, but last year was our first um uh, and we're we're taking this year and reworking it into a short film and and it's interesting for all of the the stress and the sleep deprivation and everything else that comes from under the gun i mean you end up to finish film at the end of a weekend right? and and then you're like okay now we can like make it good and absent that deadline it's, it's a very different process <laughs> i kind of <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I want to say I missed the deadline, but it it has a fun. Uh, <laughs> so definitely uh, does. Yes. No, it so, definitely does. The like the the deadline definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and when we have to see, they can be seen. Uh, we have Wild Hair Circus pretty much any place social media happens. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so you're just so you're planning on making a more developed short film out of this, and people can find you at Wild Hair Circus. Yeah. Okay. Um, trash people from the dump. Um, so I, I know that you guys have made films outside of um the film race. Um, but where where can people find those, and where can where can they find you on online? So uh, the main place you can see our creative work um that's film related is uh at our monthly art carnival that we do at escape bar and grill in portland um it's every third tuesday at 7 30 p.m i know tuesday's a weird night for people but uh we have a lot of fun um we create a lot of original stuff for that sometimes new video projects yeah. uh almost always i have a song or a new song that i've written um, for our upcoming one, which will be on the 19th of December, um, I came up with a BDSM Santa Claus song. So uh, that's something people can look forward to. <laughs> but that show has, we have like art vendors and we have uh, live performances mm -hmm. and, and then like our shorts and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. It's it's a art variety show, but it's lots and lots yeah. of fun. Online, you can find me on all of my socials at Theodra Monstar. The Audra is T-H-E-O-D-D-R-A, and then Monstar, M-O-N-S-T-A-R. And you can find me on all the social media platforms, including TikTok, uh, at Aunt Gore, A-U-N-T-G-O-R-E. Oh. Awesome. And uh, you, can, you can check out our YouTube page, too. We've been kind of neglecting it, but we do have a lot of our old yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can find all there. of our work from HP on our YouTube well, channel, for except for the newest one. And the last one. No, I think the last one's on the last, it now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I am behind, but you can find most of our previous work, and that's just uh, YouTube.com slash Trash People. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Team Amalus, each, each of you, um, because I, I know that you don't always exclusively work just together so each of you answer um the question about um if you've made other films where can people f see them and <laughs> if you've got social media or a place online where people can find out more about your projects where is that 
Uh, Michael, you go first. Yeah, okay. um, yeah Monsieur Sear is what we usually operate under. That's kind of the parent um, project. Um, it's probably easier if you just Google what is uh, Mr. Sister in French. That'll give you the spelling better than I probably <laughs> Um, and we're like monsterseer.com. We're probably on Instagram and we used to be on, on that, that Twitter platform. I don't know that we do that really anymore. Um, and then we are on Vimeo. I have some older stuff that we're archiving. We tend to um, use film races as film sketches. And since we get a lot of really talented artists and get us into a deadline, throw something together. And then I will try not to get like too involved and get to editing them and uh, but usually it's taking a longer now as I'm getting older and uh, procrastination and just life happens. So, but yeah, that's, that's where most of our stuff is, is at monsieursier.com and then monsieursier on both ends. Cool. Oh, and there's some um, past uh, HP Lovecraft. Um, I'll plug you guys uh, on uh, Arkham Bazaar um, in some of the uh, HP Lovecraft video collections, Lover, uh, probably four or five of our films I think are on there. Uh, yeah, I think four of them so classics one of the classics volumes at least at least one or two of the classics volumes and then um i don't remember which of the year titles but um you go to arkham slash films and peruse the dvd section and all all the try all the films that are on each one are listed out so you can find yeah, a lot a lot of films that i do not <laughs> i look back and i'm like oh <laughs> Ouch. I don't want to look at that anymore. But yeah, they're there for you for the other people that don't cringe like I do. I don't want to work. And uh Jeffrey, how about you? Do you make film the the film hmm. rate? And where can we find you online if you want people to know where to find Well, most of the films I do I do with Michael as well. Um we've done a bunch of stuff that is not marketable. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so uh, we did some live action stuff, and um, some of it, some of it, I think, was pretty, really pretty good. But uh, yeah, we're it's it's hard to really do uh, schedule people to do longer stuff. That's why the these film racings are actually kind of a godsend yeah. because there's a schedule that everybody has to commit to whereas when you try and get something that's going to be longer than that it's really hard to get a bunch of people to commit to that and even even with Marjusa and Amalus and whatnot we don't have that many people but at the same time it's really hard to get that many people to commit that many days to do it so where to find that? Ask Michael. <laughs> he, he, he's the one who schedules it. So. <laughs> I'm Miranda. Or Tyler, Tyler knows where it is. Okay. Honestly, out, outside of uh, outside a handful of film races, I haven't made films, and that's not that that's not where necessarily my interest is. Animation, I'm more interested in. Uh, I'd be interested in doing voice work in the future, but most of what I do is visual art. So, you know, shadow puppets and cut paper animation. I'd like to do a lot more of that. It's funny that Michael says, you know, oh, as I procrastinate as, you know, the years go on. Uh, as I get older, I procrastinate less because it's like my life is finite. Uh, so I'm trying to get in all these little projects. Um I've, I've very consciously avoided social media for a while, but you can find some of my older stuff on Insta uh, under Miranda, M-R-R-R-A-N-D-A. And uh, I'm going to have a website called Miranda.com with some of my work up soon. Um, so do you show in galleries ever? Can people find you? Yeah, actually, uh, I just co-curated a show at Afro Gallery of Lovecraft themed art and had a couple of, uh, you know, my little like paper clay sculptures 
little little guys uh, in that show. I had some of the props from other Amelis films that that I didn't make, but uh, Michael and other collaborators had made. So I do occasionally show out, but um, you know, I, I I work in social services. This is like a side gig, so you know, I'm doing more of it, but. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a side thing for now. We'll we'll see as the years like continue to trickle out or hemorrhage out. Uh, <laughs> how how much more of my energy swings into or back into fine art? Okay, thank you, um, Rick. How about you? Do you do film outside the film race, and where can people find your work? Yeah. Um, so lately, most of the stuff I've done is from film races but i do have, have done a few things and i want to start doing more short films that are not film races but again it's the same it's the thing about getting people to commit to those that's going to take a little bit longer and probably i'm going to try to do some more like try to do some crowdfunding or whatever to make it get some extra help on those too but um i'm on facebook and i have just my, on my own name and then i have a, a page for my pdx film monitor's name and then i have a youtube channel um i'm gonna change that channel name to the pdx film monitors also but right now it's pdx soap opera and the reason why it's that is because i was going to try to do a web series in a soap opera format but that was really hard to get i've done i did a lot of little segments for that but it was just too hard to get something done and to keep it going just because of finding the people to commit and not everybody's schedules it was really difficult so i'm going to take a lot of those plot lines i had for what i did there and redo them in a short film format <laughs> so along with some other projects i want to ideas i have for that too so yeah that's where i'm at right now is uh like the facebook and youtube at the moment okay great thank you uh -huh. oh uh so for people who viewed the have only viewed the lovecraft under the gun showcase online um, you may or may not know that the winner of the, con it's a contest and uh, a winner is chosen by the audience who watched it in the theater and they all vote and rate each film. And um, we can, we just compile the results like uh, the directors of the festival and the staff of the festival have nothing to do with choosing um, the winner. The, uh, it's just all the audience. Um, and this year the winner was abomination of abominations by trash people from the dump so congratulations to you guys and um everybody everybody's ratings were very high um i think in from year to year it varies greatly but uh lately like the past few years it's been really close and you guys have a lot of, like some tough competition in there and everyone does you guys all did really well with just turning in a complete story with a beginning, middle and end. And, you know, it's edited together and it's coherent and it makes sense and it's really fun to watch. So uh, thank you all so much for participating in the contest. And um, thanks to the audience for watching. And um, I hope you guys um, are able to participate again next year. And for any of our audience members who might be interested in putting together a team um, and entering the contest next year. It's usually in September. Sometime in September, we set aside a weekend for registration and you make your films and hand them in. And then they're shown at the festival on Sunday afternoon. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in that, check out the website, hpff.com. We have a group on Facebook as well. Um, this I think it's just Lovecraft Under the Gun. Um, or just reach out to us and we can give you the information, but we should be announcing dates um, pretty soon so that you guys have like all year to plan it, plan out what, what weekend to take off of work. And uh, we'll be posting that on the website as well. So um, thank you guys all for taking time out of your, time out of your days to 
come and chat with me and like talk about your films a little bit and give us some insight into the process and and everything that goes on behind the scenes so sure <laughs> okay um buddy yeah that concludes our q a so we'll see you later and see <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>